In this presentation, we will give a few examples on business case and project benefits. Here is a famous saying: "A small opportunity is often the beginning of a great achievement." Before we start, I will first introduce myself. Hey, this is Amy Law, your presenter. I have been working in IT for over twenty years in pipelines, energy regulator, oil and gas, utilities, transportations, and telecommunications. I have managed projects for over fifteen years in IT applications and infrastructure, system and data migration, cybersecurity, ECM, SAP, process improvement, and office facilities. In terms of education, I completed a bachelor and master in computer science from the University of Calgary. I received my PMP in two thousand and six. I also completed certifications in project management, change management, ISO twenty seven zero zero one, information security management system, and ITIL. Here is an example on a business case. Currently. There are a number of issues and opportunities in the information management. The current external SharePoint sites are in a non-production, or so-called pilot environment. It is not meeting the organizational standard set out in the information management and security policy, and it cannot manage the life cycle of the information. It is not in compliance. With the code of conduct, audit, and security requirements, the internal SharePoint platform is available to expand, and has the opportunity to be leveraged for external usage. To address the external SharePoint issues, we aim to start a project to obtain a number of outcomes relating to business process and information technology. First, we aim to create a new process with a service level agreement and operational level agreement to manage external documents, and we aim to establish a hosting platform to automatically manage external site and documents life cycle, which will meet regulatory compliance, internal audit, and security requirements. For IS, we aim to reduce IS operational cost through defined process and hosting platform. This will also align the solution with IS standards. We have three alternative options. Option one: implement process only, continue to keep the host in a shared environment managed by external vendor. Option two: implement process and move site to dedicated servers in a customer zone managed by internal staff. Option three: do nothing. We have identified two assumptions. The first assumption is that the external content management system contains company information. That should be managed according to internal policies. The second assumption is that SharePoint is the selected technology that is compliance with regulations. The regulations include the Code of Conduct, FERC, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, and SOX. Cybrins Oxley. The project proposed budget is seven hundred thousand dollar, and the target completion timeline is one year, with a two-phase approach. Phase one will implement an operational support model, covering document lifecycle process, service level agreement, and operational level agreement. Phase two. Will implement a hosting solution, enabling the automation of the documents 
an external SharePoint life cycle. The project team will engage a number of key stakeholders to review the business case, including the Code of Conduct, Internal Audit, IS Governance and Security, IS Compliancy, and Data Security. By definition, cost saving is a reduction in expenses. It is also known as a hard saving. It is a tangible benefit. For example, we aim to reduce the support cost by IS operations team, call center, and administration. This is a result of the cost saving from the reduced number of external SharePoint sites and users on account creation and password reset. The reduction is accomplished through the new automated account provisioning system and SharePoint site maintenance process. Let's look at the fact. External site usage is not monitored and site retirement process is not in place. Therefore, many external sites are not used and yet took up space with an exposure to unnecessary information security gaps. The organization had 61 external SharePoint sites last year. The organization has 111 external sites this year. That is an increase of 85% in one year. The growing trend is strong and consistent as the company engages more affiliate and vendors for day-to-day -day businesses. The organization has 15 service requests per day for account creation, password reset, and maintenance. That is an average of $400 per day is spent on service requests. Based on the data from the IS operations team, we know the current expense to manually maintain the SharePoint sites and users. So we can use a three-point estimate to calculate the estimated cost saving if the project brings in the automated system and proper process. For the low estimate, we know the average operational fee per day is $300 and the number of work days in a year is 240. The probability on the low estimate is 95%. Therefore, the average cost saving at the minimal is $68,400 per year. For the most likely estimate, we know the average operations fee per day is $400 and the number of workdays in a year is 240. The probability on the most likely estimate is 90%. Therefore, the most likely cost saving is $86,400 per year. For the high estimate, we know the average operations fee per day is $500 and the number of work days in a year is 240. The probability on high estimate is 80%. Therefore, the average cost saving can go as high as $96,000 per year. Based on the three-point estimate formula, we add the low estimated saving, high estimated saving, and four times the most likely estimated saving. Then we divide this total by six. Therefore, the estimated cost saving on operational fee is $85,000 per year. Another scenario on cost saving is the reduction of user fee by avoiding billing errors. Here are the facts. The external hosting vendor charged 
the organization by user count. It is two dollar per user account per month. Last year, the external hosting vendor charged an average of twenty seven hundred users per month. However, the company inventory shows that approximately eighteen hundred users should be charged per month. The deviation is eighteen hundred dollar per month. Or twenty one thousand six hundred dollar per year. A financial report is not available to automatically detect billing errors. There is no process or active monitoring to manage the user account removal from the external hosting vendor. Based on the data from the IS operations team. We know the monthly expense on user account management, so we can use a three-point estimate formula to calculate the estimated cost saving if the new system offers a report to clearly articulate the number of monthly users in the external SharePoint. For the low estimate, the user fee is. Sixteen hundred dollar per month. The probability is eighty percent. Therefore, the cost saving at the minimal is fifteen thousand three hundred sixty dollar per year. For the most likely estimate, the user fee is eighteen hundred dollar per month. The probability is ninety five percent. Therefore. The most likely cost saving is twenty thousand five hundred and twenty dollar per year. For the high estimate, the user fee is two thousand dollar per month. The probability is forty percent. Therefore, the cost saving can go as high as ninety six hundred dollar per year. Based on the three point estimate formula. We add the low estimated saving, high estimated saving, and four times the most likely estimated saving. Then we divide this total by six. Therefore, the annual cost saving from avoiding the billing errors is seventeen thousand eight hundred and forty dollar. Another scenario on cost saving is the reduction of IS implementation cost as a result of reusing existing SharePoint technical components. For example, we can reuse internal standard reports and templates in the external SharePoint environment. Here are the facts. Some technical components have been created for another project. We have five standard report and template available, so the project can we use this report and template with minor configuration, testing, and deployment. Based on the data from the IS development team, we know the estimated implementation cost. So we can use a three-point estimate formula to calculate the estimated cost saving if we repurpose the existing reports and templates. For the low estimate, the implementation cost is twenty thousand dollar. The probability is seventy-five percent. Therefore, the cost saving at the minimal is fifteen thousand dollar. For the most likely estimate, the implementation cost is forty thousand dollar. The probability is eighty percent. Therefore, the most likely cost saving is thirty-two thousand dollar. For the high estimate, the implementation cost is sixty thousand dollar. The probability is eighty percent. Therefore, the cost saving can go as high as forty-eight thousand dollar. Based on the three-point estimate formula, we add the low estimated saving, high estimated saving, and four times the most likely estimated saving. 
Then we divide this total by six. Therefore, the one-time-only cost saving from reusing the existing report and template is thirty-one thousand eight hundred and thirty-three dollar. Another scenario on cost saving is the reduction of business implementation cost as a result of reusing the internal SharePoint process policies and training materials. Here are the facts. The organization has business process policies and training materials for the internal SharePoint site, so the project can leverage. These existing materials, after the project validates and/or adjust these materials for the external SharePoint environment, this is an added bonus on the consistency between internal and external process policies and training materials, helping the change management. Based on the data from the business development team, we know the estimated implementation cost to develop new process policies and training materials. So we can use a three-point estimate formula to calculate the estimated cost saving if we repurpose the existing process policies and training materials from the internal SharePoint environment. Into the external SharePoint environment. For the low estimate, the business implementation cost is six thousand dollar. The probability is seventy five percent. Therefore, the cost saving at the minimal is forty five hundred dollar. For the most likely estimate, the business implementation cost is eight thousand dollar. The probability is eighty percent. Therefore, the most likely cost saving is sixty-four hundred dollar. For the high estimate, the business implementation cost is ten thousand dollar. The probability is eighty percent. Therefore, the cost saving can go as high as eight thousand dollar. Based on the three-point estimate formula, we add. The low estimated saving, high estimated saving, and four times the most likely estimated saving. Then we divide this total by six. Therefore, the one-time only cost saving is sixty-three hundred and fifty dollar. Cost avoidance, also referred as to soft savings, is any action that avoids. Incurring cost in the future, for example, a proposed project will increase business productivity. The productivity gains come from a tool consistency between internal and external SharePoint site. This enables a single sign-on to the internal and external SharePoint environments. Once you sign into the external site. You will also have access to the internal site, vice versa. This also improves search capability, as in the federated search. This is a technique to search multiple data sources at once. With federated search, we can retrieve information from many different content locations with just one query. And one search interface. This technology also offers standard out-of-the-box workflows and administration report. As such, the project does not have to reinvent the wheel. This cost avoidance benefit makes hosting external SharePoint site in the internal customer zone much more attractive. Than that of hosting in an external vendor share environment. Here are the facts: the number of external SharePoint users is eleven hundred people, as per data provided by IS administrators. The average hourly labor rate is fifty-seven dollar, 
as per data provided by HR. Based on the data from the information management team, we can estimate the productivity gain and cost avoidance if we proceed to the project. For the low estimate, we assume there is no cost avoidance. This is the worst case scenario. For the most likely estimate, business productivity gain is three minutes per day per user. This is 12 hours per year per user. The probability is 60%. Therefore, the cost avoidance is $410 per year per user. For the high estimate, Business productivity gain is 5 minutes per day per user. This is 20 hours per year per user. The probability is 50%. Therefore, the cost avoidance can go as high as $570 per year per user. Based on the three-point estimate formula, we add the low estimated saving high estimated saving, and four times the most likely estimated saving. Then we divide this total by six. Therefore, the business productivity gain is $369 per year per user. With the current user base at 1,100 people, the annual cost avoidance is over $405,000 for the organization. Another example of cost avoidance is the reduction of risk for delayed user access termination and possible find. Here are the facts. Currently, user accounts are not always terminated at or after user departure in the external SharePoint environment. This endangers organization reputation and data integrity. If terminated users continue to access and illegally update files in the external SharePoint site, this does not meet the internal audit, code of conduct, and security requirements, leading to a possible fine. Based on the data from the information management team, we can estimate the cost avoidance relating to penalty if we proceed to the project. For the low estimate, we assume there is no penalty if access termination takes place timely at user departure. For the most likely estimate, we assume we have a risk amount of $2,000 if we have three-day delay on user account termination. The probability is 20%. Therefore, the cost avoidance on penalty is $1,200. For the high estimate, we assume we have a risk amount of $3,000 if we have 6-day delay on user account termination. The probability is 50%. Therefore, the cost avoidance on penalty is $9,000. Based on a 3-point estimate formula, we add the low estimated saving, high estimated saving, and four times the most likely estimated saving. Then we divide the total by six. Therefore, the cost avoidance on penalty is $2,300. When the risk of delaying user account termination can lead to a negative impact to the organizational reputation, we do not have an estimate on the cost avoidance. In addition to tangible benefit like cost saving and cost avoidance, we also have a list of intangible benefit from this example. Intangible benefits are driven from how a person feels about the outcome, such as user satisfaction, and increased compliancy. They include the utilization of standard technology for collaboration, reducing the stress of overloading staff to use 
and support multiple platforms. Improved information management security on content in the external SharePoint environment by user account removal and user departure. After we have identified the tangible and intangible benefit, we will identify risk to this benefit. We assess the risk through a rating from 1 to 5. 1 refers to low risk, whereas 5 refers to high risk. The risk categories include sponsorship, business, technical, and ability to achieve. With the sponsorship, we assess the risk if the sponsor, business champion, and IS leader have been identified, involved, and committed to the project. Do we have an incentive compensation link to the benefit? Is there any risk to the change of sponsorship? With the business, we assess the risk if there will be a change to the core business, merger, or acquisition during a benefit realization. Potential we own within the company? A change of policy? Do we have the business objectives articulate, written, and signed off by VP? With the technical, we assess the risk on the maturity and security of the chosen technology. Do we have several vendors producing the product that are directly compatible with what we will use? Do we have the stability of the selected vendors and product? Is the SLA readily available? With the ability to achieve, we assess the risk on the validation with the business and IS stakeholders that this project is the right thing to do? Is there a number of dependency on benefit realization? Next, we will identify risk to the project delivery. We assess the risk through a rating from one to five. One refers to low risk, whereas five refers to high risk. The risk categories include sponsorship, technical, resources, complexity, and cost schedule. With the sponsorship, we assess the risk if the sponsor, business champion, and IS leader have been identified, involved, and committed throughout the project. Do we have an incentive compensation link to the benefit? Is there any risk to the change of sponsorship? They are the same questions from the risk assessment on benefit realization. With the technical, we assess the risk on the maturity and security of the chosen technology. Do we have several vendors producing the product that are directly compatible with what we will use? Do we have the stability of the selected vendors and product? They are the same questions from the risk assessment on benefit realization. With the resources, we assess the risk if all business and IS resources required are available. Are they experienced with the chosen technology and business domain? With the complexity, we assess the risk if the number of stakeholder groups is more than five, do we have a high number of dependency and inference? Do we expect a change of regulation and audit? With the cost and schedule, we assess the risk if the project has a long duration, say six months or longer. Is the estimated budget and timeline realistic? Is there a chance for a change of requirements? After we assess the risk to benefit realization and project delivery, we can plot the assessment rating to a risk diagram. This gives us a picture showing which categories are risky and should be focused during the benefit realization and project delivery. For example, we can see that 
the technical delivery is a high risk in this picture. So we need to focus on the maturity and security of the chosen technology. We may want to consider several vendors producing the product that are directly compatible with what we will use. Specifically, we need to select vendors and products that are stable. This picture is also showing that the project has a strong sponsorship on benefit realization and project delivery. We shall carefully maintain the strong sponsorship throughout the project cycle. Thank you very much for your time. Please contact me for additional project management templates and samples. Here's my contact information.